Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about electric trailers, but first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk electric trailers. You heard me right, the electric trailers, guys. Uh, guys, uh, here's the thing. Everybody's heard about the electric trucks, Tesla's Nikola with the hydrogen electric. There's a whole bunch of uh, other companies. We've made videos in the past. I'll leave a little card here in the corner so you can explore those topics. But this time around, we're talking about electric trailers. I'm super excited about this because this is a very interesting approach and a very interesting idea that I'll definitely want to explore. Now, uh, electric trailers, uh, you know, that, that basically allow you to electrify your fleet of trucks, whether it's one truck or you know hundreds of trucks or thousands of trucks, without retrofitting your tractors or uh, any retrofitting or you know making amendments to your uh, engines. Now the company is called Range and this is a very, very interesting uh, company, very interesting leadership in a company, very interesting technology, very interesting approach. Uh, definitely looking to see more from what they have to offer. Now, what they're promising with this is that there will be added uh, safety and uh, fuel efficiency. And I'll kind of explain how this goes. See, imagine uh, uh, your trailer, whether it's a van or a reefer, or really any, any type of trailer, could be you know, a, a flatbed or a step deck or really anything above that. But imagine having basically electric motors added to the rear at the end of the chassis, plus batteries that are already installed on the trailer itself. And this would ultimately help you know, enhance your truck's performance because you'd have something pushing you forward using electric power, which we know has a ton of torque, you know, which would add to your, uh, if, you know, safety and efficiency. And uh, it would also make easier, uh, for, for easier turns and for easier maneuverability, for better maneuverability, easier to turn into arterial streets and, uh, you know, get, and, and also easier to get up to highway speeds, right? So you, a lot more torque pushing you forward, whether, uh, you know, laden or unladen. And, uh, you know, it would also help you perform, you know, passing maneuvers a lot easier with having a lot more power to basically get around, get around the next truck or vehicle and, uh, you know, stay in your lane. Uh, it would also easily or, or help you to easily climb steep grades. They were talking about going on a 6% 6 uh, 6 grade and it can do even more than that without having any problems. And it also avoids brake fades uh, on the way down because of regenerative uh, braking that actually charges your battery. So, you know, no brake fade there, uh, no need to use, uh, your uh, you know jig brakes things like that and all of this comes from what they call their smart kingpin uh, which is basically uh, the same technology as you have already and it comes on on the trailer and it basically detects acceleration and braking on your uh, trailer and uh, the the system basically spins up the motor that gives you the necessary and needed power based on the input from you all the way up in the truck's cab uh, you know basically reducing uh, all sorts of all, all sorts of uh, you know negative uh, parts that you know have to do with diesel or burning diesel in fact they're, they're actually talking about reducing d diesel emissions by up to 41 percent and in and, and the worst case scenario you know uh, approximately a 10 percent improvement which is already saying a lot and uh, they also have an interesting setup called uh, called a mild hybrid mode which uh, is available for when charging isn't available so kind of like regenerative braking, that kind of thing. It will just constantly get you going. And what they're talking about is a consistent non-stop hybrid mode, which as long as you got diesel in a truck and you keep running, it's going to keep charging and it's going to keep pushing. And it just works really well based on what is needed uh, by 
the setup or the environment that you find yourself in. Finally, as far as charging, they have multiple charging options that they're developing. Now, this is still in development. They have some, you know, trailers that are uh, available to show, but they're not available to, you know, to purchase. They should be available in 2023 this year, at the latest 2024. Right now, they're they're really slated to go live in 2023, and it's really interesting. I mean, they look just like regular trailers with some changes made that that are kind of like in the chassis, under the system, in the undercarriage, and. And, uh, you know, with the battery, with the battery weight, you know, that that would be an issue a little bit, but they're trying to work that out with the DOT to see if they can get waivers on it because, you know, uh, electric trucks are allowed to run at a GVW at 82,000, but trailers are not. And so they're trying to make that work. But ultimately, guys, what's really cool, what really gets me excited is that with this extra power from the rear, it really changes the game because it adds, uh, you know, stability control and you can say goodbye to uh, jackknifing because uh, there's jackknife protection with, uh, you know, with power coming in from the rear. So no more wagon tails going through I-70. Uh, in any case, guys, uh, this is a very cool thing. I'd love to hear from you guys in a comment section below. And also, please, if you haven't done so, smash the like button on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the loads we book for our customers, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. We have some uh, good news. Some rates are a little bit better than others. Uh, we have uh, Reefer that did a little over three bucks a mile on average loaded. So we're going to start off with that. Coming out of Zanesville, Ohio, going to Lexington, South Carolina. It's a 43,000 pound load of food ingredients, 522 miles. Booked at 1250, got them 239 per mile. Then Matthews, North Carolina, go to Miami, Florida. It's a 40,000 pound load of dry goods, so the reefer stayed off on this one. 742 miles booked at 1470, got him buck 98. Then uh, right out of Miami with two picks going to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It's a load to scale. Uh, flowers, 35 degrees on a reefer, 1,158 miles booked at 4,700 bucks. Coming out of Florida, guys, going to Pennsylvania at 406 per mile. Telling you, Florida can be a godsend during the right season. Right now it's flowers, 406 a mile for 1,158 miles. Doing an incredible job. Definitely looking forward to see how well this driver does next week. This is gonna be great. In total, 2,422 loaded miles ran. Grossed $7,420, got an average of 306 per loaded mile. Excellent job on the driver, excellent job on the dispatcher. Way to go, guys. Next, we got ourselves a dry van coming out of Monroe, Ohio, going to Mitchell, South Dakota with a 45,000 pound load of paper rolls, 936 miles, booked at 1,900 bucks, got them 203 a mile. Then, Wyndham, Minnesota, going to Ralston, or Ralston, Nebraska with a 20,000 pound load of steel products, 234 miles, booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 427 a mile, excellent job. Then Aurora, Nebraska, going to Corinne, Utah, with a 45,000 pound load of pet food, 832 miles, booked at 2,800 bucks, got them 337 a mile, excellent job. They finished off out of West Valley, Utah, going to Grand Junction, Colorado, 40,000 pound load of dry goods. So the drive-in, 283 miles, booked at 750 bucks, got them an easy 265 per mile. All in all, they ran for seven days, Tuesday to Tuesday. The last driver was also seven days. Uh, ran 2,285 loaded miles at an average of 64.85, uh, 64.50 at an average of 282 per loaded mile average. Excellent job. Moving on to a uh, reefer coming out of Sioux City, Iowa, going to Buffalo, New York. It's a refrigerated uh, food load at 28 degrees, 41,000 pound on the weight, 1,014 miles, booked at 2,700 bucks, got them 266 a mile. Then right out of Buffalo, New York to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with a 43,000 pound load of food uh, and beverages. It's a dry load, reefer stayed off. 284 miles, booked at 850 bucks, got them 299 a mile. Then Merstown, Pennsylvania uh, with a two dropper to Albany, Georgia and Dothan, Alabama with a beer load at 44,000 pounds, running 36 to 40 degrees on a reefer, 996 miles, booked at 1950, got them buck 96. Then Mountain Valley, Georgia, going to Fairfield, Ohio with a 40,000 pound load of fresh chicken, 28 degrees on a reefer, 571 miles, booked at 1,700 bucks, got them 298 a mile, coming out to Ohio, great, great job. Seven days on a road, Tuesday to Tuesday, grows 7,200 bucks, excellent job, $7,200, ran uh, 2,865 loaded miles on an average of 251 per loaded mile average. Excellent, excellent job. Next, we got ourselves a dry van coming out of Grinnell, Iowa, going to Winchester, Kentucky with a 7,000 pound light load of plastic containers, 631 miles. 
$1,100 booked, got them buck 74. Sometimes you gotta take them in order to move to a better market. Then out of Walton, Kentucky to Duluth, Georgia, 41,000 pound load of food and beverage products, 452 miles, booked at 1,100 bucks again, except this time 243 a mile. Then Nelson, Georgia, coming out to Sandstone, Florida, 43,000 pound load of calcium uh, carbonate, 361 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got him an easy 277 a mile. Then Jacksonville, Florida, going to Wilmington, North Carolina, with a beer load, 43,000 pound heavy stuff, 436 miles booked at 900 bucks, got him 206 a mile. Last one was a one pick four dropper right out of Wilmington, North Carolina, zero deadhead coming out to uh, Henrico, Virginia, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Alexandria, Virginia, and a final in Washington, D.C. It's a 38,000 pound load in total of building materials, 377 miles booked to 1750, got them 464 per mile. 464 a mile, guys, that's how you do it. Seven days in a row, Thursday to Thursday, ran 2,257 loaded miles at an average of 259 per loaded mile average, grossed $5,850 gross. An excellent, excellent job on that driver. Next, we got ourselves another drive-in. Coming out of Streetsboro, Ohio, going to Richland Center, Wisconsin. 17,000 pound light load of plastic, 577 miles, booked at 1,000 bucks, got him buck 73 on that one. Next, Monroe, Wisconsin, coming out to Dyersburg, Tennessee, with a 40,000 pound load of steel, transformer course, 555 miles, booked at 1,020, got him buck 84 on that one. Then uh, Memphis, Tennessee, coming out to Plano, Illinois, with a 9,000 pound light load of uh, irrigation equipment, 518 miles on that one, $950, book got him buck 83 kept uh, kept in that lower range then De Pere, wisconsin auburn washington long long run with a 43,000 pound load of food products 1937 miles booked at 4200 bucks here they are at 217 per mile uh per loaded mile running at a ton of miles Ended up increasing the average to two bucks a mile, running seven days, Monday to Monday, 3,587 miles booked, um, three, two bucks a mile on the dot, gross $7,170. You can see, you can make 7,200, 7,100, 7,400, money is there. Moving on to a dry van coming out of Abilene, Texas, coming out to uh, Bessemer, Alabama with a 28,000 pound load of grocery products, fairly light, 805 miles booked at 1425, got him a buck 77 on that one, then Bessemer, Alabama with two drops, one in Blair, Nebraska, and a final coming back out to Bessemer, Alabama. It's a round trip, two pick, two drop round trip, 30,000 pounds in total, all dry goods, 1,836 miles in total, booked at 3,700 bucks, got him 202 a mile, excellent, excellent job. Then Bessemer took another run to Blair, Nebraska with a 30,000 pound load of dry goods. Uh, 922 miles, booked a 1725, got him a buck 87 on that one, did an excellent job. Seven days on the road, Wednesday to Wednesday. $1.92 running average, 3,563 loaded miles at an average of uh, buck 92, ended up grossing 68.50. That's how you do it, that's how you outrun your fixed costs and then you focus on your variable expenses, variable costs. We're gonna finish off with a last drive-in. Coming out of Lincoln, Nebraska, right where I'm at right now. Rutherford, uh, Rutherford, New Jersey was the one drop. 20,000 pound load of uh, partitions and wood composition. Fairly light load at 1,289 miles. Booked at 2,500 bucks. Got him a buck 94. Not bad. Coming out to Jersey. Coming out of Elizabeth, New Jersey to Richmond, Virginia with a 36,000 pound load of food products. 322 miles. Booked at 700 bucks. Got him 217 a mile. Then Chesapeake, Virginia to Kansas City, Kansas with a 43,000 pound load of animal feed. 1,174 uh, miles. Booked at 2300 bucks got him a buck 96 on that one they finished off out of independence missouri going to indianapolis indiana with an 11,000 pound light load of dry food uh or dry goods 475 miles booked at 844 miles that got him a buck 78 on that one Seven days on a road, Friday to Friday, rolled $6,344, ran 3,260 loaded miles at an average of buck 95 per loaded mile average. An excellent job for all drivers included. As you can see, the money's still there. We got guys breaking a $3 barrier in this market, running at over three bucks a mile loaded. We got guys uh, breaking $7,000 gross in this crazy market. We got the volume, we got the miles, we got the rates, we got the gross. What else could you ask for? Well, we'd love for the market to turn around, but for now, we work with what we got available. And if you work with us, what you're gonna have available are very experienced uh, dispatchers, a very experienced staff. We've been through the ups and downs of different uh, markets. We've been through good markets, the bad markets. In either market, we basically squeeze out the very most that's available 
And if you're not hitting these kind of numbers and you're working just as hard, then you certainly need yourself a better dispatcher. And we work with not only carriers who operate under their own MC authority, we also work with lease on owner operators. So if you're overpaying, for your lease on program, if you're overpaying for your dispatch program, if you're not making us kind of gross, if you're just simply struggling, definitely get in touch with us. Call or text us at 801-448-6363. Also, you can go to our website at aftdispatch.com. You can uh, you know, basically get in touch with us in the comment section below. But in either case, until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care, guys.